Welcome to the inaugural recording of Let's Talk Schools in Fulton County. I'm Mike Looney, I'm the superintendent of schools, and I'm delighted that we're starting this series where we bring the work that we're doing in the school district to families all across our county. Dear President Bernath, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm very excited to be about part of this inaugural filming. So a lot of people ask us all the time, what is the role that school superintendents play versus board members? And you are the board president, and so you preside over the board. Um, and so talk to us a little bit about what the board president's role is as it relates to school governance uh, in our county and in the state of Georgia. Well, in Fulton County, we have elected board members. There are seven of us. We represent distinct districts. We are elected by distinct districts, but we truly represent the entire county. And the, the uh, difference in what I do is I preside as board president over the meetings and with Vice President Dove, who you'll meet in a minute, we help set the agendas, but no single board member has power by ourselves. We're only um, able to act when we are together as a group in a formal setting. So in some ways you keep order in the, in the board meetings. You have the gavel and you control the pace at which we do our work at the board meeting and preside over the meeting. That's right. How long have you been the board president for Fulton County Schools? I am in my third year of being the board president during this time. I was board president uh, probably about 14 years ago. Uh, the normal board president's term is two years. The normal board vice president's term is one year, but we can succeed ourselves. And um, many of the board members have served in the office of president or vice president. So you're the board president and you preside over the meetings and you're elected by the public to be the president or who Thank elects you. you to be the, come the, the board president? Thank you for clarifying that. We as a group elect our own officers and um, we also, with the board officers, often represent the board if we are out in public at other meetings, if someone is invited to come, usually it's one of the board officers, but it's not limited to board officers. And um, we try to represent the will of the board when we go out to talk to other groups. Right. And so, Ms. Dove, you are the vice president of Fulton County School Board. Uh, welcome to this inaugural show. I am so happy to be here. And finally, we're in the 2020s. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited that we're in a face-to-face -face environment and, and, you know, we put this off for a while because of the challenge of this related to the pandemic, but really excited about getting this started. So what role does the vice president of the board play, Ms. Dove? So the vice president supports the president, and so if the president is absent, I am able to take over and preside over the meetings at Fulton County Schools. But it is very important that we act as a unity, although we independently represent each distinct district. So we work together on governance and structure, and we make sure that we are checking in with our fellow board members and we are speaking as one voice. And how long have you been the vice president? Thankfully, I am serving my second term and I've been on the board four years. Okay, and do I remember that you just were reelected recently? Yes, I was. So um, it is our board is the one who elects our president and vice president. As Ms. Bernath said, the vice president role happens every year and it's an annual role. So board officers preside over the meetings and, and your roles are somewhat interchangeable, but at the same time, you represent a specific region within Fulton County Schools and you're elected to those roles by your stakeholders, by your constituents. So what area, Ms. Bernath, do you serve in Fulton County Schools? I represent District 7. There are seven districts and I'm my number is seven, my lucky number. And uh, my area covers parts of Sandy Springs, Alpharetta, Johns Creek and Roswell. And I have, I'm in my 23rd year on the school board. Wow, that's a long time. Well, congratulations for your, and thank you for your service. Thank you. And Ms. Dove, you represent which area of Fulton County? I represent parts of College Park, East Point, South Fulton, Union City. And so when you're making decisions uh, for your constituents, when you take your oath of office, do you take your oath of office just to represent your region or do you take a, a, an oath of office 
to, to make decisions that are in the best interest of the entire county. How does that work? You can, you can start. You know, yeah, so in. for me, I took office because I wanted to make a change and be the voice of the students and parents that are in my area. And I also took, a, it's both, it's not one. I also took an oath to make sure that all children around the district have exactly what they need, no matter where they come from in a part of the district. That's awesome. And Fulton Brown. County, as you know, is a large district. It's very diverse. Some parts of the county don't look anything like the others. And while we have to keep that in mind about our particular districts in looking at the different topics that come up for the district, we have to look at what's best for the entire district. And sometimes that's hard for folks to understand. We, because we are so different and diverse, some areas of the district might need things that other areas of the district don't need. So we have to keep that in mind that one size does not fit all. And we try with your support, or we support you as you try to make sure that every area gets what they need. And one of the biggest challenges is people don't understand our two roles. So the easiest way for me to describe what we do is the board collectively says what we want to have happen. At the end of the day, this is the result we want to see. The superintendent has to figure out how to do that. We don't tell the superintendent how to do that. All we can do is react to what you bring to us. So if you bring us an idea we like, we can support that. If you bring us an idea we don't like, we don't support it, but we don't tell you what to bring us. You have to come up with something else to bring to us. So it's a fine line between governance and management. You are able as superintendent to go back and forth between the two. As board members, we are governance. We don't manage anybody but you. So I'm your single employee. So right. the board doesn't hire principals, doesn't no. interview principals or teachers. And so when parents, or community members have concerns about something at a specific school. I know that we have a parent's bill of rights as an example. What's the process for a parent to um, register a concern? Do they call the board member? What's, what, what, because you don't supervise principals or teachers specifically, what is it that parents should do when they have a concern at the local school level? We have we get conversations like that a lot. We get phone calls, emails saying, please help me fix this. Our job is not to fix it. Our job is to pass it up the chain of command and make sure that the public understands what the chain of command is to ultimately get it to the staff member that can solve the problem. And, and specifically, so an example would be a parent would reach out to me over phone or text message. I would respond, please reach, have you reached out to your principal? then if they have not reached out to their principal, then they have the opportunity to reach out to their zone superintendent. And then if the zone superintendent doesn't resolve it, then they are able to reach out directly to the superintendent. Well, that makes sense. We're a large, complex organization. We have processes in place to celebrate the wonderful the work that's happening here. I know board members from across the district, all seven of you, attend meetings and events, whether it's a, a theater performance or a basketball game or a football game. I know you're always doing that, but we have processes in place to deal with the difficult work of the district to make sure everybody's treated equitably and fairly with respect and dignity. And so thank you so much for your work. I know when I was uh, interviewing for this position, one of the sources of pride that you ladies um, shared with me and, and the rest of the board shared with me is that we do a lot with a little. In other words, we, the board that is, work deliberately and diligently to keep the tax basis very low. Yeah. So how do we compare to all the other regional school districts uh, that we, uh, you know, are next to as it relates to the tax rate? Um, do, do, we, do we charge more taxes, uh, less taxes? Are we kind of in the middle? Do you, can y'all speak to that? We have the lowest millage yeah. rate in the metro Atlanta area and have for many years. And that's one of the charges that we give to the superintendent each year when we're starting to build our budget. One of our longstanding parameters is that we want to keep our millage rate low. We like not to have a tax increase. We try to do rollbacks when we can. Part of what's helped us with that too is the voters' generosity in passing the special purpose local option sales tax or SPLOST. SPLOST has helped us 
use an additional pot of money from that one penny to help do all of our capital programs, support our transportation, our technology, textbooks, other things like that, that would come out of our general fund if we didn't have that additional source of revenue. So we have the lowest uh, millage rate, school millage rate in the area? Yes. That's incredible in a, in a school district as large as we are. And you there know. are, I think, 11 districts surrounding us and one in the middle of us. And we're still able to do that. Well, this was a great start to our inaugural recording of Let's Talk Schools. I look forward to you ladies coming back and us having the opportunity to talk about the wonderful things that's happening in Fulton County Schools and the important partnership that board members, the administration, the school district has with um, the community at large. So thank you, ladies. Do you have any final thoughts before we, uh, we end this first show? We have a great governance team. We work collaboratively and cooperatively together, and we hope we'll continue to do so. Awesome. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you, Ms. Bernas. We have a great governance team. One, when I came on board, one of the things that's really awesome is that our board has tenure. That could be a good thing and a bad thing in some districts. But in our district, we work well together. You has, have history, and they've welcomed new ideas as we continue to grow. So I'm so happy to be a part of our governance team, as well as a member of the Fulton County School Board. Awesome. And I want to thank our viewers for tuning in to Let's Talk Schools, our inaugural show. We'll be sending this out in multiple platforms, YouTube, we'll put links on Twitter and Facebook, and of course, on the Fulton County Schools cable television channel and we will be putting this out every Wednesday. I hope you turn in tune in next week. Mm -hmm.